Welcome to this week's Prepare Like a Pro Live Chat Friday show. My name is Jack McLean, and this week's key topic will be all about caffeine tips for game day. Is it useful for footballers? How much should you take and how long before game time? I'll answer all of this and more. But before I do, a quick reminder, it's our last day to join our 30-day challenge. We have two currently on offer. One for strength and conditioning coaches wanting to make an elite impact, uh, make an impact in elite sport. If you're listening in the podcast world, you have up until 6 p.m. today, May 30th, to join. That's when the first day one challenge goes out. So make sure to head over to preparelikeaproacademy.com.au. It's completely free. The course is valued at $99 and you go in the running to win over $1,000 worth of prizes. That, In fact, the most engaged challenger for the footballers membership will win a year on our program, which includes a year academy membership valued at $699. Jess Ben loves fundamentals on sports nutrition for AFL and AFLW valued at $66. Ben Stanley Enhanced Football has offered an eight-week online kicking course and a kicking video analysis at $175. And Swift Supplements have kindly donated protein powder and creatine at a value of 152 That's a total value of $1,092. So if that's not enough, make sure to jump on. You'll also get a free month on our Academy, which is our latest and newest platform. It's going to be uh, released to the public on July 1st. But for all those, as part of this 30-day challenge, that will be within our Academy. So you'll get a free month trial, your own login, and you'll get access to all our presentations and education platform. There's thousands and thousands of dollars worth of content on there, and it's all for free. And this week's key topic is all around caffeine and how we can use it to help our football performance on game day. So let's get straight into it. Uh, it doesn't need to be uh, specifically game day. Maybe it's a main training session that you want to use caffeine. G'day, Lucky. Um, perhaps Gus, g'day, mate. G'day, Jack. Perhaps it's a, um, a really important gym sector. Maybe you've got some strength and power testing that you want to use caffeine. So all these tips and tricks uh, are transferable to an important physical um, element that you want to prime for and, and be at your best. So before game day or any competition like a draft combine, I suggest footballers don't use coffee as their caffeine source, but instead drink caffeinated sports drinks. That's really, really important. Or take caffeine tablets because we can be more specific and um, precise with our uh, dosage so for recreational athletes and athletes that are less serious in a less serious block of training two to three cups of coffee 60 minutes before exercise likely will enhance your football however each caffeine is a little bit different and i'll go into a little bit more detail on how much uh, each coffee sorry is a little bit different in how much caffeine you're going to get so highly recommend using uh, supplements um, either in liquid form or something like no dose in tablet form broadly speaking this is true a standard cup of coffee um, is generally around 100 milligrams of caffeine for most people two cups of coffee will get you 200 milligrams and we want to roughly aim for 2.5 milligrams of caffeine per kilogram so if you weigh you know 100 kilos so, uh, so to set that you you know you need a, around a, a couple of cups of coffee um, to provide a performance benefit for um, an important element to take is that the brand does differ, so it's hard to get a specific dose. So that's where supplements like Nodos can be handy. It has 200 milligrams of caffeine per pill. So if you need 2.5, you just simply, you, know, you can have a pill with a mate. Um, and this is where it's all about knowing your body weight as well. So maybe you, you weigh yourself in on, on game day or, or your draft combine or wherever you're using um, caffeine as your um, supplement enhancing um, drug of choice so going through the recent scientific research there is clear ergonomic effect in stimulating the effect of the central nervous system which just think about this as basically for the athletes out there you're just um, activating and boosting energy in your body to be able to produce force more explosively so things like acceleration your ability to jump your ability to fend off all those powerful activities that you need um, caffeine can, and science has shown caffeine can enhance that by stimulating your central nervous system. Um, and it also reduces the sensation of fatigue. So this is where for the draft combine, and I know the girls just did that recently, um, but potentially your work rate 
can you can work a little bit harder and find an extra gear in in that pain cave um, due to the caffeine having scientifically effective of uh, the sensation of fatigue is reduced so that's where from an endurance point of view you may find some benefits and the perception of work effort and even pain um, has been reduced so football is an endurance sport it's a it's a long game it's the longest team sport in terms of duration so endurance is a really important aspect so caffeine helps both ends of the spectrum your power but also your ability to work hard and your work rate so really really important helpful benefits of endurance performance um, and from, from a strength point of view and speed performance, it's a little bit unclear, but with those two taken into account, um, there'll be certainly some athletes that feel that it, it has been a benefit to them. Um, it was, I, was, I struggled to find a huge amount of effect on speed uh, and max velocity. However, um, no doubt there'd be some athletes out there that have had some speed benefits and, and maybe even just from a training stimulus point of view by supplementing caffeine um, it could be placebo, it could not be, but they might have found that they got a better session out of it. So um, there is clearly some performance benefits. In fact, it used to be banned uh, in the Olympics, so that's pretty telling in, in the performance benefits side of things. Um, but we also want to be aware of the fact that the research is limited on the performance effects of caffeinated coffee as coffee appears to have a potential improvement performance when it provides a typical performance-enhancing dose. So... All in all, in terms of if you're supplementing caffeine, try and focus on um, supplementation rather than drinking your coffee because you won't know. So if you go to your local barista, you'd be better off um, having a supplementation where you know exactly what dosage you're getting out of that caffeine hit so you can find your sweet spot and um, maybe you work with a dietitian or a sports doc to work out how many milligrams is best for you and your digestive system and, and your um, body weight and so forth. There was some, uh, a good research paper, which I'll add in the show notes of this podcast in 2007, which was determined of a level of caffeine in 97 different samples of espresso from the Gold Coast, finding that caffeine ranged from 25 to 214 milligrams per coffee. So for a cup of coffee, that was the, the range, which is massive. Um, so you're not going to get a huge performance benefit if you're only having 25 milligrams. As I mentioned, we want about 2.5 milligrams per um, kilo of, of weight so um, that's where if you're relying on it on game day by going to getting your local coffee or maybe you're having your own plunger coffee um, and you're trying a new brand of coffee it might not be the same as the one you had before so just to repeat that again in 2007 study they tested 97 different samples of espresso from the Gold Coast finding the caffeine content range from 25 to 240 milligrams of coffee so you can find that in a PubMed um, research and I'll add the link in the show notes in conclusion before a game i suggest athletes don't use coffee as their caffeine source but instead drink caffeinated sports drinks or caffeine uh, tablets important to consult a sports talk or a dietitian and um, get your timing right as well so for most athletes it'll be about that 60 minute window um, so within 50 minutes would be your best time to have caffeine um, we want to make sure that you're um, you, you're peaking at the right time. So that will be a little bit different with everyone's metabolism, but um, that's something you want to consult an expert in. Uh, but certainly you don't want to be having your coffee in early in the morning if you're uh, and having that hit if you're, if you're playing later on that day for a 2 p.m. game. If you're new to the YouTube channel, make sure to check out our playlist where you can access a lot of power uh, exercises but also free running programs in Team Builder where I go through with some examples of our running conditioning sessions for all those in all the female athletes out there that are in off season you've just finished your combine potentially and you might be preparing for hopefully your first afl preseason um if you were to get drafted or it might be vfl wherever you're wanting to play your footy um, um you can have some some structure and direction there <laughs>